going on, Audio Skills listeners? It's Ben Runyon again with AudioSkills.com here with a new series for Audio Skills. In these videos, I'm going to be talking about topics that I'm very interested in, topics I'm sharing with my students at the various universities I teach music production at, and topics that you as listeners and subscribers are interested in. Uh, so I wanted to start off uh, with one today that's really, really uh, been interesting to me, and that is the advent of and the introduction of uh, Logic Pro 10 10.4. which is really amazing. And it's no secret that I'm a fan of Apple and possibly a fanboy. So uh, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, that being said, this 10.4 update reads more like a Logic 11 update with any other DAW. It would be an Ableton 10 or a Cubase, whatever. Uh, it feels more like a whole number update than um, a point version. And it is free, as usual, with Logic uh, and Apple. So that's really exciting. So first things first, the system requirements, it is going to require uh, Mac OS 10 Sierra or Mac OS 10 High Sierra, uh, Sierra at the minimum. So if you're on El Capitan, you are going to have to go ahead and update your computer, which obviously I would recommend that you back it up first um, and make sure that you have licenses and keys to your various plugins set before you embark on this wonderful journey to make sure that you are covered when you update. And make sure if there's really um, any important third-party plugins that you're interested in, make sure that they are supported on the newer operating systems. So with that said, I'm going to get started uh, with some of the topics that um, are very pertinent in Logic 10.4 because this is a huge update and the first one I will start with uh, is going to be the addition of Smart Tempo. If you're an Ableton user, you're familiar with warping and you are familiar with uh, things that you put into Ableton immediately being useful uh, and immediately being synced to a tempo. This is now available with Logic 10.4. Keep in mind, this is on a project setting level and not on a master overall setting. So let's talk about how you'd get into that. So first things first, you're gonna to go to the file menu, you're gonna to go to project settings, and you're gonna to go to smart tempo. When you get there, it's gonna have a couple different settings. The first, which is project tempo mode. Uh, basically, what this is inferring is if you drag something into the project, do you want it to keep the project tempo? or do you want it to adapt to whatever loop that you've brought in? Generally speaking, the way you want it to behave is the way that it's currently set at, which is keep project tempo. And then it has specific instructions or specific settings pertaining to when you drag it in, how is it going to analyze it? Now, if you're familiar with Ableton Live, there's the beats, the bars, uh, I'm sorry, beats, warp, uh, there's repitch mode, there's complex, there's complex pro. Uh, this is very similar to that, and I immediately just set it to on plus align bars and beats. I haven't gotten to dig into it totally, but when I set it to this setting, this is the way it behaved in Ableton, or at least the way I was used to it setting. So that also kind of uh, rolls into a very important thing about uh, Logic 10.4 as well, which is the Media Files browser. Now, I'm just gonna play a quick little uh, section of this song I'm working on and just kinda let you listen to that quickly so you can understand the framework uh, which we're in. I did bounce down all the MIDI projects uh, or the MIDI uh, regions to uh, audio just for computing power for the moment. Okay, um, in bouncing my project down to audio, there was some changes um, in the mixing levels. Uh, so this will be a good opportunity to use some of the new plugins available in Logic 10.4. But before we do that, let's continue our talk about Smart Tempo. So if we go up to the top right in the Media Files browser and we go to All Files, there's actually a new section um, that you won't see immediately here uh, called Bookmarks. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. If you go to your home folder here, any file or any folder rather that you desire, you can right click and hit bookmark. This will now immediately be available right here, which is amazing. It's something simple, something that probably should have been there in the first place, uh, but it's great that we now have it. And that said, when you open it up, you're able to look at all the loops that you have, whatever sample packs that you have. So let me try to find 
I don't know, let's see if I can find something that's not melodic and that's drum. Drum loops, perfect. So this drum loop is in 140. If you look at my project, it's at 118 beats per minute. So when I click on it, now you'll notice just from listening to that, that it was trying to play it in 118. So you heard some of the distortions in it since there's such a great variation in the tempo. Uh, let's see if I can find something that's just more percussion related and less bassy since this already has plenty of bass in it. Let's see here. Now, if it's able to play it back and it's a WAV file, you'll see at the bottom this little preview button that you can click on. Okay. So this percussion loop doesn't necessarily pertain to this genre. Uh, it was set to 126. This is in 118. Let's see if it does its job or not. So why don't I go ahead and drag it to this beat right here. And you can see I didn't successfully drag that directly where I wanted it to at the beginning of the bar. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this section here and play it back. And just to kind of get the full feel of it, why don't I go ahead and just extend it to the rest of this cycle so it goes through a full cycle. It actually sounds kind of cool. Sounds like a little garage beat. Actually kind of like that. So that's really exciting. That might seem insanely arbitrary and insanely small, but for us Logic users, um, which I am an Ableton user as well, and I love Ableton. This is the one feature that Logic's been missing for a long time that's kept me going to back to Ableton time again. Um, and this is one big feature that's probably going to keep me in Logic more than anything, uh, more often than not, um, regardless of what genre of music you play with, uh, uh, which... Uh, includes, and I don't know if I can really give a perfect demo of it right now, um, if you play in something without a click track, uh, it will attempt to adjust the project uh, tempo, if you choose that setting, uh, to what you've played. So even if you're in the acoustic, the rock realm, um, alternative music, any music that's not necessarily electronic heavy, uh, this will benefit you as well. So if I double click on one of the regions here, or, or click on it and pull up E for editor, You'll now see that there's an absolutely new section um, in the editor window as it pertains to audio, and that is under file tempo. And under file tempo, it's going to say, ooh, Apple Loops contains tempo information that cannot be modified uh, by this editor. Um, so let's see. Was that an Apple Loop? Did I cheat? I may have cheated. So uh, let's see if I did cheat. Why don't I try a different loop real quick? Uh, but you'll see that it works the same. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Afro Latin producer, Afro Latin, that's trumpet. Um, I don't want a trumpet. So let's just see if I can find drum real quick in my packs here. Drum loops, Berlin machines. So let's just drag this in and see what happens. So you're going to see the exact same thing happens. And perfect. So let me go ahead and drag this in four times, and you'll see that immediately, much like an Apple loop would before 10.4, an actual loop that is not an Apple loop will now play along. So what you'll see, like I said, when you open up that audio region is now it's actually analyzed how the transients line up with logic and it will even attempt and now this is in 118 uh, it'll attempt to define its tempo as close as possible and you can try to help it by nudging those warp markers if you will using ableton terminology and maybe flex is better for logic uh, to the downbeats and under actions you'll have some options that you might remember from ableton which is analyze again adapt all these things they're, they're similar they're different um, so for instance adapt region tempo to project tempo if it didn't do a great job and rather um, adapt project tempo to region so i'm assuming that would change that beat uh to something else now that was in 118 and so was that so maybe let's try something uh maybe even a little bit harder to see if it still does its job so drum um so yeah sure 90 beats per minute that's a fill how about 110 that's a loop let's find out here by dragging this in and you're going to see it's analyzing and it's done a great job
so you'll see anything you bring in it's doing its very best to adapt it to the tempo so let's find something that maybe fits with the track a little bit more so I can demonstrate um, some of the other plugins so let's go ahead and delete that loop and let's just find something else let's see drum let's go ahead and search one more time let's preview perfect so you're going to see it's going to do its analyzing and boom it's done now just don't forget under here under bookmarks you can now pull up your loops directly so let's go ahead and keep going here really awesome uh, so now kind of looking at the clock um, about about 11 minutes in my video so I'm thinking maybe I want to cut these videos up into two videos um, the smart tempo and logic 10.4 alone is enough uh, to update this this is a huge huge update so what I'm going to take care of in next week's video is the new chroma verb um, so I'll give you a quick little preview of that that is a new convolution reverb similar to space designer but also has an EQ built into it so check this bad boy out I'm gonna take a look at that we're gonna take a look at the new vintage EQ collection uh, that is now available So there's absolutely a ton of stuff to be totally excited about in Logic 10.4. Uh, so what I'm going to get to next week is going to be the Chroma Verb, the Vintage EQ, uh, Camel Fat, which was bought by Apple, now has the new Step Effects and Fat Effects built straight into Logic 10.4. We went over the Smart Tempo, we went over the System Requirements, uh, we went over the Smart Folders, and we went over Preview. So I'm going to dig a little bit more into plugins next time around. So again, starting this week. From now on, every week, we're going to have a new video with audio skills if this is something that you guys are interested in. And we're going to talk about new topics in the uh, digital audio production world. And we're going to talk about some of my uh, patented techniques that I discussed with my students. This has been another video for audioskills.com. I'm Ben Runyon. Check me out at benrunyon.com. Take care, guys.